Hey everybody, for those of you that don't know, my name's Hoopy. Today we're working on a Honda Foreman 450. And we are gonna be converting this thing over to front disc brakes. The first obvious thing we're gonna do is get it up in the air and get the front tires and wheels off. So when you go ahead and open this box up, what you're gonna find inside is a nice set of brake rotors, um, some spacer looking things, but those are actually what your wheel studs are gonna to connect to. These here's the plates that bolt to your uh, spindles. A whole bunch of bolts and two calipers so we're gonna get started on this oh and if you get stuff from super atv um they used to include instructions with everything now you got to download it on your phone digitally um i don't know i guess i could see them going green as they quote it but uh it kind of sucks whenever you're trying to do stuff like this and you got to keep pulling out your phone and zooming in so you can see what the hell you're doing next thing we got to do is pull these old drums off so I just want to go over this. If anybody's ever done anything with these Honda drum, brake drums, they know that they suck. The first water crossing or mud hole you go through, you end up losing brakes. If you lose, if your wheel bearings start going bad, your brakes go bad. Um, it rubs them out and then they don't work or you got to pump them to get them to work. So in order to get these drums off, sometimes this plug here, this is your uh, service plug. So this here's your service plug, and what it is for is to adjust the pads out with the uh, adjusters inside. Sometimes after you've used these for a while, you might have to back those adjusters off to get these drums to come off. The issue with that being, like at the point right now why I'm converting this over to the disc, is there's mud and water in here and this bike sat so long everything inside's rusted and froze up. So to release those adjusters is just impossible. Um, first thing you got to do is remove these two 8mm bolts to pull this off. And then where I was going with my story is the fact that these drums are cast. So if they don't come off very easy, which I know this one will, because I, I had it off to inspect this. See, this one here is going to slide off pretty good. But you have to be careful that you don't bust these. Because they actually do break really easy. But as you can see inside here, Everything is just totally seized up with rust. There's no way I could get those adjusters to move. And only one of the wheel cylinders is even working. Whenever you squeeze the uh, master cylinder, the brake lever up there, only one of them is even pushing out a pad. They're just completely shot. So that's why I decided to convert this over to disc brakes. Over here on the other side, I haven't had this one off yet. And this here is the example I was going to give you on the fact that these things stick. These things stick, and I can... See, I don't care if I break it because I'm converting it. But I, I, See how easy that stuff just cracks off there? You can actually crack the drum itself, too, doing that. It's not like a steel drum on a car. And that's why I hate these Honda brake drums. They ain't even good enough to be a boat anchor. Something I would like to note in these instructions says modifications must be made when using on OEM 12 inch aluminum wheels with inner lip. These are OEM aluminum 12 inch wheels. They came off of a Honda Rubicon. The Honda Foremans had steel wheels on them. These came off of the Honda Rubicon. What it says you've got to do, and I'm going to double check this and we'll probably have to do it, but it says to use 12 inch aluminum wheels, area shown must be slightly ground to clear inner wheel lip. So when we get that far, I'll show you that, but I just wanted to make a note of it. So the next thing we got to do is strip all this down. Uh, from my understanding, the only thing I'm actually saving is the hub. And I've got to press the studs out of it because we don't need those studs. They gave us different ones. We've got to pull the center nut, pull the hub off. We're going to strip these brakes down. It says to remove that brake line, but secure to where it doesn't 
let all the fluid drain out. Well, the only way you can do that is to get it above the master cylinder, and there's no way to do that. So I'll probably leave that line attached to the last minute. But this backing plate and everything's got to come off. So just disassemble all this. And this is what I meant by I'm leaving this attached until I've got the caliper right here and ready to put on so I don't lose all my brake fluid. Because these uh, these are really hard to bleed out. I'll put it that way. So next up for removing these studs, it says stick it in a press to make it easy, but you can use a hammer. The best way I know to do this, and this is just the easiest, get you a socket that fits around that good. This way you're not actually putting any much pressure on your um, on your hub. And it's that simple. One smack with a hammer, they come right out. Next steps we gotta do is install this plate onto our knuckle. And then we've also got to bolt our rotor onto our hub. I'm using blue Loctite on these bolts and I'm using red Loctite on these hub bolts. I do not want any of this to come loose and considering the fact that your lug nuts spin onto the outside of this, um, yeah, I'm putting red Loctite on these. They screw into that spacer right there and that's gonna hold those tight. All right, so putting this plate on, these two holes face the rear. The caliper does go on the back side of this. And again, I'm going on with some blue Loctite onto these bolts. And again, like I told you on these bolts, I'm putting a smidgen of red Loctite and I'm putting it right here because back here, nothing screws in and up here's where your lug nut screws in. This spot right here is where it's screwing into that, into that spacer. And the way this gets assembled is you take your rotor, put your bolt through, Install spacer, then the hub, then this will get screwed into this spacer here. And then you just assemble all four of those like this, all four studs onto this. And it says fully tighten them. So here's what your uh, fully assembled product will look like. And then it says just go ahead and reinstall your hub back onto the uh, axle. So next up on these instructions, what it tells me to do is go ahead and mount my caliper on here. And it's caliper B. Always make sure your bleeder is up. Air rises. That's how you get the air out of the lines when you bleed it. But go ahead and just temporarily bolt this on here and then stick my wheel up for fitment to see if it's going to clear this or not. So I'm going to just slap this on here and I'll show you what I've got there. We went ahead and got that bolted on there real quick. I'm going to grab a wheel. We're going to slide it on here. We're going to see if it clears this. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's it's grinding on it. Um, and this is a full-time four-wheel drive bike, so I can't just spin the... Uh, spin the wheel around. So I'm trying to score it on there so I know where to grind. So you can just barely see on the tips right here where that was touching. If you look in here on my wheel, right here, it's hard to see. Right there, you can see where it was scratching, and that's where it rubs. So it tells you to take the grinder and just grind these down just a wee little bit, and it'll clear. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. Well, I hope I was recording that, but if I wasn't, I'll do it on the other side. But anyhow, I had to take the grinder and just grind these tips down a little bit, but I stuck them back up here. We're still rubbing, but I don't know exactly where. So I'm going to put a little bit of paint on this, and then I'll be able to see where this wheel rubs it off at. Well, it looks to me like it's rubbing right there. Yeah, I don't think we touched anything out here. It looks to me like it's hitting that right there. All right, so once we put the lug nuts on there and it centered the wheel up, it no longer grinds. It doesn't rub anything. Um, I'm going to try to look through these holes here and just double check, but I think we're good to go. And this kick did come with a new banjo bolt and some nice washers to go on it. If you're doing it like I'm doing it, more than likely, you're going to have a hell of a time breaking this loose with a wrench. So I'm just going to use my impact to pop this loose. 
And then we've got to hurry up and get this onto the other one so we don't lose very much fluid. All right, we got our line on there, tightened up. Um, boy, that's stretching on that thing. I don't, I'm gonna read those directions. Maybe I gotta take that loose from there or something. Something just don't seem right about that. That should have, I don't know. I just don't think that that should be that tight to that tie rod. So these instructions say that you may need to relocate this brake line. The issue I'm having with that is they're saying you might need to relocate this bracket clear up here. The one I'm having issues with is down here. So they're saying relocate this bracket. This bracket's fine. It's this one. Because watch. Watch whenever I twist this all the way to the left. Watch how it stretches that brake line. That's where I've got an issue. I don't think it should do that. I mean, that's... It's pulled tight on that. All right, so after studying on this for a minute, once I pop this off, I think what the directions are saying, but they are very unclear on it, is put your relocation bracket on this one because as soon as I took this off and got it up here, if you line this up about right in here, it gives you plenty of clearance this way and you're still good this way. It stays where it's supposed to, I mean, it almost stays there. You could probably leave it like that. And then what it's wanting you to do is turn this one over to bring it up top here. So simple enough, I'm gonna do it and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so short of just unbolting this and leaving it hang here, this here's the best I've come up with. It, uh, this here's going straight. This here's turned all the way this way, it does good. This here's turned all the way that way, it does good. It rubs this tie rod just a smidge, um, but it's got like a protective layer over it. I don't think it's gonna hurt it. This bike doesn't get used very much at all. Um, so I think we're good to go there. That's, like I said, that's the best routing I can come up with. Well, that there's the uh, disc brake conversion on the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and knock the passenger side out. Oh, I'm sorry. That would be the passenger side. The right side. I'll put it that way. That's on the right side. I'm going to knock the left side out real quick. And then we'll, uh, we'll get the bleed knees and doing tests. All right. There we go. We got both sides all installed here. Now next uh, to bleed these brakes. The only thing that I'm going to do um, for a start is make sure my master cylinder stays topped off. And I'm going to do one side at a time, but I'm just going to crack the bleeder and I'm going to let them gravity bleed until I get a good stream coming out of it. And I'll tighten them up. Once I get both those done like that, then I will probably have to have somebody help me or I'll put a bungee cord around this and I'll pump these up and hold the pressure on them and crack the bleeder to let the, to make sure it blows the air out of everything. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a test ride on this. All right, doing the right side over here. I can, I should be able to get this by myself. I've got the brake pumped up. So I did manage to get this side by myself by simply coming in here, turning the handlebars all the way this way and pumping it up and with my left hand, breaking the bleeder loose and tightening it. So I, I was able to do it by myself. So we're going to throw these tires on here and take this thing for a test ride and see how these disc brakes do. All right, well, we're all back together. Let's uh, see how these brakes work. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, they'll uh, 
Uh, they'll throw you up on the handlebars pretty good quick. I would say that they're going to need broke in just a little bit. That and the fact that I never even cleaned the oil off those rotors might help. I might spray those break down, spray those down with some brake clean. So, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that's really good. Um, I mean, I owned one of these bikes brand new in 2002, and the brakes, even the factory drum brakes, never were great. Like they might lock the wheels up sometimes, but it was rare. Yeah, they're getting better the more you use them. All right. Well, there you go. There's converting a Honda Foreman 450 uh, front drum brakes to disc with the Super ATV kit. Now, granted, this here, I use factory 12-inch wheels. Um, if you had 14-inch wheels or even possibly just aftermarket 12s or the stock steel 12s, you wouldn't have to grind anything on them. They would just fit right on there and bolt on fine. It's these uh, factory Honda aluminum wheels is the only ones you got to modify. But, uh, yeah, there she is. She's converted over. If you guys like videos like this, go check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching.